Hello. Gotten that okay. Um, well, if you're online, w a welcome as well um, from Kyoto. Well, it's very nice to see you all and to be here. Um, so, I think what we're going to do is just start with some intros and then uh, explain what what Bruna and I had in mind for this session. And please do let us know if you you came here with a different idea. <laughs> But um, we will we will set out what we have in mind for the next two hours, and um, there it, there is a plan to maybe do breakout groups. So if that's not what you were planning, um, <laughs> just warning you there. It's um it's really uh, really an interactive session. So hopefully you will get a lot out of it. Um, so yes, yeah, so my name is Sheetal Kumar, and I co-lead Global Partners Digital's advocacy engagement. Um, and as a human rights organization, our vision is really the governance of digital technologies underpinned by human rights and inclusive processes. So for us, the Global Digital Compact, which is the subject of the, um, the event today, is an opportunity to shape global norms. Um, on digital governance so that they are rights respecting and inclusive. And I know that we share that with many of you and so it's so good to see you here. Uh, I'll pass on to Bruna. Hello. Yes. I'm oh, just saying hello and welcome to everybody. Um, as Chital said, this is the civil society gathering and the, the idea is for us to discuss um, how to properly engage in the GDC and um, which is a process that I know a lot of us um, are already engaging um, with. So some of the ideas for today is like walk through the process to the ones that don't know as much about it um, because we do have like some points about information sharing and how to streamline participation on that and then also share a little bit on how the contributions from some of the NGOs um, have been so far in some of the movements. Um, but that's that, um, and I'm, I did introduce myself, but I'm Bruna, and I'm a Global Campaigns Manager for Digital Action, so nice to see everybody. Sure, hey, I am Peter Mysek. I'm really happy to be here. I'm kind of envisioning this room as we're all in a circle, or more, of a, more of a circle than, than a, you know, a, a presentation. Uh, um, so, uh, yeah, I'm General Counsel at Access Now, and. Um, lead our UN engagement. Uh, but I think um, beyond the, the pressing matter of the GDC, we also like to convene uh, civil society um, from digital rights and, and uh, inclusion and equity communities before IGF begins um, every year, uh, this global IGF. And so um, stemming from the days of the Best Bits Coalition initiative, and uh, you know, through a lot of the organizing that we used to do in person on day zero, uh, we uh, are really happy to convene folks and wanted to make this as like our first first point of connection, and to help folks um, plan for the week ahead and uh, hopefully collaborate and strategize too. So, um, I hope that happens as well. Yeah, thanks for coming. Thanks. Um, do people want to quickly um, do a round robin and say who you are and where you're from? Um, great. And a fun fact about yourself. No, I'm joking. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. I'm Aidan Fodolin, fellow of the Alfred Landeca Foundation. Hi, everyone. I'm Laura O'Brien, senior UN advocacy officer at Access Now. Hi there, I'm Jutta Kroll from the German Digital Opportunities Foundation, mainly my focus is on children's rights and the digital environment. Hi, hello everyone, Valeria Betancourt from the Association for Progressive Communications. Hi everyone, this is Daniela Schnidrich with the Global Partners Digital, Head of Engagement and Advocacy. Uh, hi, everyone. Veronica Ferrari, Global Policy Advocacy Coordinator at the Association for Progressive Communications. Hello, I'm Amalia Toledo, Public Policy Specialist for Wikimedia Foundation. 
Ziski Putz, Senior Movement Advocacy Manager from the Wikimedia Foundation. Jan Gerlach, also Wikimedia Foundation. Um, I support these two. <laughs> Stephanie Vera, I'm actually not civil society. Um, I'm from the UK government, working in the Department of Science, Innovation and Technology. Hi, my name is Shabna Mochtahedi. I'm legal advisor for digital rights at the International Center for Not-for-Profit Law. Uh, hi, my name is Kasumi Sugimoto. I'm from uh, National Institute of ICT in Japan, and I work for uh, workforce uh, development uh, for cybersecurity. Hi, I'm Maria Agne Diaz, YID campaigner at Access Now. Hello, I'm Alexandre Costa Barbosa. I'm coordinator at the Homeless Workers Movement in Brazil. Hello, my name is José Renato. I am a founder of the Laboratory of Public Policy and Internet, LAPIN, in Brazil. Hello, my name is Elena. I'm the managing director at the Global Network Initiative. Hello, my name is Rafik Copeland. I'm the platform accountability advisor at Internews. Hi, my name is Ariel McGeed. I'm a program officer for the Asia region with Internews. Hello, I'm Alice. I'm a facilitator for the Brazilian Youth Group. Hi, everyone. My name is Joanne de Cuna. I'm from Delhi. Uh, I'm part of a, the Center for Communication Governance. It's an academic center at the National Law University. Hi, uh, my name is Zhi Hao. I work at the Taiwan Information Environment Research Center, uh, uh, focusing on misinformation and uh, information manipulation. Hi everyone, I'm Isabel Ho. I'm from GovZero, and I'm also the uh, Secretary General of uh, Taiwan AI Academy. Thank you. Hi, I'm Franziska Jacobs. I'm Digital Governance Advisor at GIZ, German Development Corporation. Okay, well, amazing to see such a big group here, um, and, and well done on finding the room as well. <laughs> I followed Bruna. <laughs> so we wanted to start with a bit of context for those of you, like Bruna said, um, who might not have been as engaged with the Global Digital Compact as others. So just to explain where the digital co Global Digital Compact, ah, ah, gosh, slow down. Global Digital Compact came from where we are in the process. Um, and then we wanted to hear from you if you have been engaged with the process, with any of the consultations, what you have, um, what you have said really, what your key messages have been. Um, and I know that there have been some events, including yesterday that colleagues at APC and others uh, led on um, related to, to this process. Um, so we want to make sure that we are really all on the same page as to what the discussions have been so far. Before we look forward, and um, hopefully we're not being overly ambitious, but what we thought would be a really great output of this meeting is to consider where we have come to and then draw on that and on the in issues paper that the co-facilitators of the compact um, have developed. It's short, it's only two pages, but it reflects back the consultations that have already happened. Um, and drawing on that, we thought it would be great to get five or six key messages from this group um, that we can take forward into the IGF over the next week and then um, even, even further down the line. So, I hope that sounds good to you. Um, does anybody have any questions, or are you hoping to, to achieve something else today? L and I. Yes. 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 <laughs> Just to flag, we're going to have a one main session about the GDC on the 10th, I think morning, 11, or something like that. Schedule is confusing this time. <laughs> but um, we also are gonna have another main session about the future of digital governance. So these are two that are vastly connected to the GDC and the future of the IGF. So it will be really interesting to gather some of these inputs um, in, in interaction moments for, for civil society. 
Can you just get a raise of hands of who has heard of the Global Digital Compact? Cool, more than half. And then who's engaged on it? Who's like participated in some of the stuff? Yeah, less than half. Thanks. And some sort of, sort of. Okay, a brown half, yeah. Okay, which is why we're doing our um, summary of where we have got to so far uh, to begin with. Um, and we actually wanted to pull up, if that's okay, the colleague from, yeah. Um, we wanted to pull up the timeline that is in the UN Secretary General's policy brief from earlier this year. I think it's the next slide. Oh, it's so small, so let me just um, come up here and explain. Um, so yes, so the Global Digital Compact was first referred to in the Secretary General's Roadmap for Digital Cooperation, which was an output of a high-level panel that he appointed. And in that, um, it was suggested that uh, the UN adopt a global digital compact which would outline shared principles and objectives for an open, secure digital future for all. Um, and so, again, that was referred to in the SG's report in 2022, our common agenda. And from there, kick-started consultations for what should be in the compact. There was a suggestion for overarching themes that the Global Digital Compact should be structured around, namely um, upholding human rights, and I can't remember the rest, so I'm going to cheat by looking at my notes, um, avoiding internet fragmentation, um, digital connectivity, promoting a trustworthy internet, so a few few themes that were suggested the compact be structured around. And so those consultations ran 2022 um, to 2023. Um, and this year we also had oral consultations, so a number of opportunities to speak to these themes um, through both in-person and online consultations. And Peter, I think you were trying to get a sense of who's engaged on that already and about half of the the, the people here have, so that's really good to see. And then just um, last year, it was a, um, just to kind of put this in the context of the broader uh, framework within which the compact will sit, last year a resolution was adopted by the UN General Assembly for um, the Summit for the Future, which is envisioned for next year to take place in September next year. And as part of that, a pact for the future will be adopted. Within that, it is expected the Global Digital Compact will, will be part of that pact for the future, one of five chapters, I think it is, which will focus on, on digital issues. And the compact will be part of that. So really, it's an opportunity, um, at least that's how we see it, to reassert um, the importance of a human rights-based uh, and inclusive um, you know, norms that to, to govern digital, digital technologies and digital governance. And I know that there are a number of other key messages that, that others here also want to see reflected in this, in this important document. Um, now, where we are is in 2023, of course, um, having had the ministerial in September, the, the preparatory meeting um, for the summit, which will take place next year, a resolution has been adopted, which sets out that there are co-facilitators for each of those chapters I mentioned that will be in the pact. And the co-facilitators for the Global Digital Compact are expected to be the same ones that have been running the consultations up until this point. Um, and then the actual negotiations between member states, and it is in the resolution that the consultations for the compact will be intergovernmental. Um, so I think that's another, perhaps something else we can discuss is how to ensure that, although of course the discussions will be intergovernmental, how will they be inclusive of all stakeholders? So that's something we can discuss today. And those are expected to start in January um, and, and continue through to um, June next year where uh, they will then wrap up um, and it's expected that there will be a text to adopt um, by the next session of the General Assembly. So that is where we are, lots of dates and <laughs> I hope that that helped and this, this is a timeline which I know is very hard to see, but you can also access it online. Um, let me stop there to see if anyone has any questions or indeed wants to correct anything I said, maybe I got something wrong. 
No, just to add really quick, because um, also the reason why we opted for hosting the civil society gathering on this topic this year is because a lot of the discussions on the GDC, they might affect the future of the IGF and, and how this fora is moving onwards and, and what's coming up next, right? So um, you might have heard about like a lot of discussions on what is digital governance, what is internet governance, how do all of these spaces connect with each other, um, what is digital cooperation in this kind of like broader landscape. So um, a lot of the debates surrounding the GDC and, and before that in the roadmap and, and a lot of the discussions on the roundtables, they had some ideas about the IGF Plus and how we were moving forward or how are we moving the IGF towards this more kind of like a strategic and decision making space. So that's also why we opted for adding this to the agenda. And um, one of the points that was brought up at some point was the creation of this new fora, the Digital Cooperation Forum which would be <laughs> a little bit um, overlapping with the IGF. So we, we also want to hear a little bit from you guys on what could be the impressions about improving or connecting these spaces, or even um, how, is it, how could the IGF serve this role of helping strengthen multilateral relationships and the UN and the whole discussion about um, the UN 3.0 that um, is also in one of the um, policy brief, so just to add that. Oh, that's a really good point. Thanks, Bruno. Um, so yes, the future of the IGF is also part of these discussions. Um, does anyone have any other questions or reflections? Hello to people who've just joined us. Uh, we, yeah, do you want to say Just to say if anyone wants to come in, there is a mic in the middle of the room, so you can just go there. And say your name. <laughs> okay. We did a round of introductions, yeah. so if anyone wants to yell out and say hi, go ahead. Um. Yeah, I just wanted to say great. <laughs> hi everyone, my name is Manuela. I'm from Mindful Digital. I'm a new member of the Digital Cooperation. I'm really excited to be here. Hi, I'm Lee. I also came up with the idea of like this is the one year, the year of yeah, it's like the September of and we're just We don't rebuild on what we've already been doing, um, and you know I'm happy to start with with actions now, colleagues, on that, um, or anyone else who wants to to share if you have been engaged <laughs> with the uh, with the compact already, if you've sent any written consultation, um, written input into the consultation, or any have you engaged with any of the oral discussions. I think the mic is off. <laughs> it's on now. <laughs> yes, well, obviously. Oh. Ah. Yeah. Maybe not so obvious, though. Um, <laughs> Wikipedia is all about community decision making, and so that's something that we highlighted, right? Like, if you think of sort of all the regulation that's gonna go into the digital compact. Don't forget about like what the communities actually need, what collaboration looks like for folks mm -hmm. across jurisdictions especially. Um, that's something that we highlighted um, and also some 
connections to AI as uh, the, the there's this separate project uh, to regulate AI. Um. Yeah. So community-based, um, the importance of affecting your community is bottom-up discussion as well. Okay, great. Um, anyone else? <coughs> yes, thank you again. As I said in the two de table, I'm a children's, children's rights advocate and um, we, together with the Dynamic Coalition on Children's Rights in the Digital Environment, we gave written input, but so far we have not been able to take part in any of the cons consultations, and that is mainly because children's rights organizations are <laughs> uh, understaffed and underfunded, so we don't just don't have the resources to take part in all these meetings, but what we have seen so far is that in the roadmap for the digital cooperation, children's rights have been an issue, and now we have uh, upholding human rights in general, but not a special reflection on children's rights, which we think, uh, considering that children are the future, and they are uh, uh, right now, um, I do think one third of all internet users worldwide are under the age of 18, so considered to be children uh, uh, under the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, so we think it should play an important role. Lovely, thank you so much. And then I saw a hand here, yes. Mariagne, access. Um, we were part of, of the Americas consultation. I, I say we, that's a royal we. I was in the <laughs> Americas consultation earlier this year. and. Uh, one of the things that I would like to highlight from that conversation is that um, the agenda that was uh, brought to the discussion was focused on connectivity uh, and access, which is, of course, uh, access now. Um, but uh, there <laughs> sorry for that. That was terrible, and I know it. Uh, spare me. I just landed like an hour ago. Uh, um, but... Uh <laughs> One of the things that uh, uh, a lot of the people that were present in the discussion wanted to bring into the agenda, and we did not have time for it because of the whole time devoted to connectivity, which of, of course, yes, is that uh, surveillance um, and the intersection between surveillance, people on the move, and identity for Latin America, it is uh, a moment of, of crisis uh, as, well, the world. The world is in flames. Uh, let's not go there. But there was a lot of conversation on the size of the meeting regarding the, the state of surveillance in Latin America, particularly state-sponsored surveillance specifically. And I think that it is important that we bring that back into and, and not, not leave only um, connectivity as a topic for, for Latin America just because um, we are poor. are taking notes. One in the back. Okay, great. So I'll come to you. Um, all right, I'm Ellen I from the Global Network Initiative, but I'm also co-chair of the Freedom Online Coalition's advisory network. Um, it's an advisory network of civil society that provides input to the Freedom Online Coalition, which is a group of 38 governance governments. Um, and as an advisory network, we had submitted proactive advice to the FOC governments on the GDC, and we published this, I think, because we felt so strongly about the, the implications of the GDC process. Um, so you can find the advice online. And just to run through some of the concerns that the advisory network had highlighted, um, one was a, a shift from multi-stakeholder governments model to multilateralism that we felt was being pursued in the GDC, um, concerns about the Digital Cooperation Forum undermining the IGF and multi-stakeholder forums um, and models of governance, um, the exclusion of the technical community as a separate stakeholder group. Um, so the GDC focuses on governments, private sector, and civil society, um, but as we know, the technical community plays a really critical role in internet governance. Um, and we felt that that was excluded. And then a focus on big tech business models, as well as a number of procedural concerns, including how fast this process has moved forward. Um, and I think we see in that same trend in a number of initiatives, including with the UN 
high-level expert body on AI that's being put out um, by the Tech Envoy, a lack of meaningful civil society engagement. I know a number of different civil society organizations that felt frustration in trying to give inputs into the GDC process and um, participate. And then the fact that it's been a New York-based process, um, which in the minds of the advisory network members is a highly politicized, state-centered, less inclusive, um, and less experienced with multi-stakeholder governance model. Um, so we're, we have a really solid um, set of uh, a foundation, I think, to build on there with, with that and everything else we've heard. Um, what did you say? The Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, hi, we, we did a written submission um, uh, with our sister organization, the European Center for Not-for-Profit Law that um, uh, focused on um, civic space, online civic space um, uh, issues across multiple of the uh, topic areas. Um, and one of the points we raised um, uh, was kind of the siloing of human rights into one section. And so we, we were, uh, you know, taking a rights-based approach through all the, um, all the areas. Um, but I just wanted to say that we had a, we discussed this quite a bit. Um, uh, we usually, when we do written submissions like this, we um, uh, do consultations with our uh, wider network of partners. Um, uh, and we were debating whether to do that for this written submission, but the the scope was so broad and it was so unclear what <laughs> how this was all working or leading um, into you know the final process and then um, and then the you know cons uh, you know virtual consultations that took place were also kind of chaotic in a way. Um, and so we just really didn't know how to include our broader network um, in the space without feeling like we we weren't giving them anything concrete uh, to work with. Um, and so I just was really wondering what the vision is moving forward, how we can be um, working together um, as a group more strategically um, and kind of how where our effort would be best placed. Um, so yeah, that's it. Uh, those are great questions, thank you. Uh, we can try and answer some of those. Yeah. Oh, sorry. There you go. Hi, uh, appreciate the time. I just wanted, we are from the Internet Alliance, which is an applied research lab for connect meaningful connectivity and uh, data privacy. Um, and we formed this this year because we are kind of recovering from big tech. And so we come from very technical backgrounds and trying to get involved in these kinds of forums. Uh, some of the questions I think we would like to discuss, I've followed Access Now's work really closely for the last couple of years. And I'm curious as to how this coalition moves into um, like actionable steps with these governing bodies. And I think even like these coalitions of 38 governments that you were mentioning, like where does the nexus of progress actually happen? <laughs> Questions, um, Laura, and then that one. Oh, yeah. yeah, Laura O'Brien from Access Now. So just to go over some of our engagement in this process, um, we've been heavily involved. Um, we've done regional consultations, as Marianne alluded to, um, in the Latin American context, but also in Nairobi. Um, we've done some written submissions, um, as Elle and I mentioned, um, harnessing the Freedom Online Coalition. That's where we were pushing internet shutdowns as a main topic, and the FOC um, had done a written submission with all the different sub-entities, and, and Canada led that as the former chair of the FOC. Um, we also worked on a written submission on targeted surveillance, which was led by Amnesty International and signed by and joined by a lot of other civil society organizations. Um, and then we're involved um, in supporting a gender uh, submission, which um, was led again by another coalition. Uh, APC will speak more on that, I'm sure. Um, in terms of the oral um, statements, we I think being based in New York was beneficial um, 
to be in the room because we were trying to get a lot of the sense of you know whether we could engage on these or, or how the modalities were working. I think we can all recall that the human rights online session is where we saw the modalities shift um, from a full day to a half day. Um, and the repercussions of that were quite severe in the sense of um, you know, human rights organizations not getting the opportunity to speak, uh, even governments were being cut off. Um, so that was super unfortunate and we did raise that um, in some engagement with the co-facilitators, um, Sweden and Rwanda, um, in upcoming sessions at the RightsCon, which was in Costa Rica. We did a session with Derechos Digitales um, and also with the folks seated here <laughs> um, doing a lot of work um, trying to, to get more information from the co-facilitators. Um, I just wanted to highlight that I think in terms of topics or themes that are seeking like more of a focus within the GDC so far, I think digital public infrastructure um, has been highlighted by the Tech Envoy um, um, quite heavily and also played a role in the Secretary General's policy brief. So I think t for today, uh, it w I think it would be helpful to if we could maybe have a discussion on that topic and how to advance uh, human rights um, within that. Um, but yeah, I'm happy to speak with more folks who are trying to navigate the GDC process itself. Um, it's something, like I mentioned, we've been tracking quite heavily. Thanks. Thank you very much. Let me just provide an overview of our engagement, very similar to what Access Now, Laura from Access Now has. As mentioned, we have been participating since the beginning, engaging with the global online consultations as well as the regional consultations in Asia, uh, Africa, and Latin America, um, and then uh, participating in the deep dives around our priorities, which are around the gender equality and gender justice, environmental justice, and obviously, uh, human rights and the nature of and the scope of internet governance. Um, um, concerns were many, many so far in the process about how um, the changes impacted in the ability and capacity of civil society, civil society to engage meaningfully, including the ministerial meeting of the summit of the future. As uh, Sheetal explained, the Global Digital Compact is uh, within the, the, global, the, the summit of the future, and it was not possible at the end, despite of all the promises of the, from the co-facilitators about uh, facilitating engagement of civil society, it was not possible to participate and to access uh, to the information and the details of the docu documentation for the negotiation happening in New York recently about the modalities of the Summit of the Future, which was very unfortunate. Um, and that sets a very bad precedent in, in what is to come up I mean, in relation to the negotiations. Um, we also uh, submitted written submissions, one of uh, um, APC around these issues, the priority issues that I mentioned, but also we facilitated joint submissions, uh, submissions sorry, around gender and another one around environmental sustainability. Um, in relation to gender, we have been concerned with the fact that not only in the negotiations so far about the modalities, uh, there are not specific mechanisms to ensure that there is at least gender balance in the participation of the different stakeholders and bringing the civil society voice, but gender as an issue. Uh, has not been prominent either, so uh, because of that, we have been um, collaborating with different uh, organizations to um, get a better commitment and a stronger commitment from governments to advance gender and to consider gender as a, as, as a key aspect across all aspects uh, related to the Global Digital Compact, but also take into consideration gender issues. And in that regard, um, we took the opportunity of, the, of this IGF to organize yesterday a dialogue with, uh, first with civil society organizations, uh, we put together these feminist principles for um, including gender in the GDC, which has, has been collectively developed with, um, with different groups. And they were presented yesterday to other civil society organizations 
uh, for leverage and all, obviously for contributions as well, and also to uh, exchange views around the strategies to uh, advance agenda agenda around the GDC. And in the afternoon, uh, governments were invited um, to, to have a dialogue and a conversation with us around um, mm, feasible ways in which they could, as part of their own engagement in the process, to help us to advance agenda agenda in relation to the GDC. So I invite you also to look at the principles, I uh, can share the details on where you can find them. Um, but it could be uh, 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 very good if we can have you and your voices joining uh, around efforts to make sure that gender is considered, apart from obviously uh, human rights and, 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 and other considerations. Uh, and moving forward, we are very, very concerned about uh, what the implications are going to be once the co-facilitators are um, confirmed. Uh, and uh, what the, the possibilities for participating and engaging in the negotiations are going to be. So far, the, 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 the fact that the, the, the process is based in New York has been, has been presenting a challenge in terms of civil society engagement. So how that will play out in terms of the negotiations is a big, big question. Uh, and also what's the common vision that we should be pushing for and coordinating around them together. Could I, could I just ask a yeah, follow-up, I suppose? Yes. Um, uh, in the room yesterday, um, what was the temperature of the room? Are people excited about this global digital compact and this process and the opportunities it provides? Um, are they sort of resigned that it's going to happen with or without us anyways? And so we may as well you know, uh, make our voice heard and you know, perhaps are dismayed that gender wasn't one of those um, you know, key sub-themes, the seven or eight, um, or is, is it just not, not even registering you know, that much on, on people's agendas? I don't know, or maybe, it, maybe it's not one of those three, but just to get a sense of, of the room. Yeah, 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 yeah of course. I think we more or less accepted that, right? So like there is a lot of, because to me the main impression about the process is um, there's way more question marks than um, information about it, to us at least, right? Like from the conversations we had the impression that it's not every member state that is as engaged. Um, we have this kind of like, f not focus, but more dominance or even like knowledge coming in from Global North, um, generally speaking, or the ones that are champions in the human rights conversation. So that makes it much harder, like when you try to engage with delegations like Brazil or Chile or anything like that, right? So, and a lot of the doubts that at least I felt in the room as well was how are we going to actually ensure that if this is kept as an intergovernmental process, the, the missions are going to allow us in, right? Like the modalities question is the main one and the one we have been asking like ever since day zero. So um, there is some sense of discomfort in the room, right? So, but at the same time, like we need answers to some extent. And it's, it's interesting and important that Tech and Boy is engaging with civil society and so on, but to some extent it's also limited, the engagements and the answers and the decisions. So, I mean, yeah, just, just sharing a little bit on that. Yes, of course. I think there is a higher, high level type of engagement of governments in the GDC. Uh, so obviously there is a, a political commitment perhaps because it is an intergovernmental process that uh, it is within this bigger umbrella of the summit of the future and I think governments have made commitments. There is a geopolitical dynamic that is also permeating the way in which they engage with the Global Digital Compact. 
so yesterday, obviously, the high-level interventions were very positive in relation to their own role and their own commitment with making gender a key consideration. But then the, the big question that, was, that, uh, that uh, was, was also brought up is how that is going to take uh, shape, how, it, how, it, how that is going to be translated into practice uh, with the fact that the negotiations are going to start and we don't know how, what, how the negotiations are going to look like. So I think that's the question that remains and that we should keep asking the, 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 the question. And I think uh, perhaps one, is one step forward uh, yesterday, because obviously the, the participants that we had, including the UN Tech Envoy and, and very high level uh, government representatives, was that I, I think it, the, the message is clear that there is expectations at the level of civil society groups for them to facilitate our participation, including through um, making us part of the national delegations, because that's the only way in which we are going to be effectively <laughs> influencing the process. So I think that point, it was, was made clear to them, and, and I, I hope my interpretation and, and, and what I want to use to put some pressure and demands on them is that their commitment to make gender a key consideration. So that if, they, if they really want to do that, they have to work with us in different ways, including making us part of the delegation. And just to add as well, I think the, at least for some of the global majority countries, the elephant in the room is how actually the, to me at least, the G20 processes are also gonna connect with this, right? Because India has made a lot of advances, like advancements with the, the whole like digital public infrastructure debate within G20 and Brazil is bringing the information integrity into the G20 agenda as well. So are these discussions gonna be like repeated in both places? Are they gonna engage with the G20 first and then like just like revert it back to the to the GDC or something of the future? So another of the, on the list of questions, right? So yeah. Okay, um, thank you. So lots of questions. Um, and we, if we haven't answered any of them, please let us know. But we wanted to check as well how everyone's feeling at this point about um, tackling head on <laughs> the fact that the Global Digital Compact is meant to outline shared principles and objectives for an open, free, and secure digital future for all. And considering everything that everyone has said, um, breaking out into small groups to huddle and consider about two messages each um, to then discuss and perhaps see whether we can agree on. Um, and as I mentioned at the beginning, for those of you who weren't here, the idea is that we can take forward those um, and reflect them in the discussions um, in, in the upcoming week and indeed in the process going forward. And um, it would be great before we do that as well to share that we've looked at the issues paper that the co-facilitators issued um, about a month ago, which was a reflection of, it's just two pages, it's not very long, but it's along the themes, and in fact it refers to digital public infrastructure um, of the compact that have been recommended. And so there are a number of, well, reflections really, um, and it's very concise. It also doesn't refer to the Digital Cooperation Forum, which is an interesting reflection of just how strong the messaging around the Internet Governance Forum was in the oral and written consultations that were received. So it's, it's, qu it's quite a good basis, I think, uh, for, um, for discussion. So the breakout groups can draw on what you've heard on your own work, but also perhaps look at the issues paper that the co-facilitators have developed and suggest ways of strengthening it, um, strengthening the gender element, strengthening you know, the community element, um, whatever you think, because in that way, it's already been put out there in the world, it's something that's been developed, it's, it's building on um, what, what has already been discussed. So uh, in essence, what we were suggesting is that we break out into little groups, we use the basis of you know, what the co-facilitators have put out, what you have said, um, draw out a couple of key messages and come back together and see whether there's anything there we can agree on um, that we all want to reflect um, in the discussions around the GDC. Going forward, is 
What do people think about that? Because we don't have to do that. We can do something else. Do we hate breakouts <laughs> at this point? <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I could get a feeling from your faces. <laughs> Right, the table, so yeah. A way of, well, what we, we could do, I supp I mean, so let's think of some options. I mean, if you really, if we don't want to do breakout groups, we could go through the issues paper, para by para, and hear your reflections on it and how to strengthen it. <laughs> it's okay. Lovely. I don't know whether that's sarcastic or not. I genuinely can't tell. <laughs> more options, more options. I have a suggestion that might be a little bit out there, but um, more creative, hopefully. Um, so maybe using some like foresight practices, and we could do either, like first start out with an individual, like a poem or something that we write about this like vision for this um, digital future, and then do a collective one. So like, what is the story of this digital future to communicate it in a different way? So that's just an alternative option instead of maybe going paragraph by paragraph and. decide they want to do that okay so a more creative poem based approach or um, something something like that any other ideas or no, I mean not, not an idea but a request that if we can touch upon issues of related to the process as such so our key concerns in relation to the process and perhaps perhaps also the key concerns in relation to the issues. Because we know no, what the issues are, the tracks, the thematic tracks, so what our key concerns in relation to those moving forward. So maybe mm. we can start with the round, right, of like key concerns or even um, criticism of the process. I'm aware that this is a very diplomatic space, but yeah, yeah. Okay, um, so we have different ways to use perhaps the next 30 minutes before we think about next steps. So one is the breakout groups, another is like a more creative poem-based approach, then there's the, well, going through the issues paper, um, and then actually focusing on process as opposed to the substance of the GDC. Um, or, <laughs> or Process and substance, okay. And format-wise, um, breakout groups are like off no. the table, or? Yes. <laughs> are we? <laughs> okay. I'm That's sensing a lot of like Zoom trauma in this room, so <laughs> it's fine. We can go with the collective therapy session, right? And then <laughs> everybody shares concerns and questions. I think it's... The on the process for the first yeah. 15 minutes yeah, and then we break and out. Concerns and complaints, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, one very big therapy session, so break up. So group. should we do a plenary yes. pr um, concerns about the process and recommendations? Oh, yes. Peter. I think that's the right question to ask, but I, I do want answers row by row. So each row is going to choose a <laughs> rapporteur. Yeah, that is going to happen. Ellen, <laughs> 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 yes, go ahead. Oh, do you want to? So coordination. Do you want it? Do you want it? Actually, it's hard to hear you. Oh, sorry. Yeah. 
Yeah, sorry. I was saying that something at least I would be really interested in, in is how we as a group, as civil society, can coordinate better around these issues and take advantage of the fact that we're here at the IGF um, in the same room together. I've had a, heard a lot of disparate um, conversations around, around GDC coming in silos, and so how can we start to put together a more unified position. Um, there's some really key issues being debated um, with the GDC and other internet governance related processes and visions um, right now. And I think it's a key moment for civil society to come together and say what we actually really need for the governance of, of the internet. <laughs> to me, it would be the multi-stakeholder versus this multilateral yes. vision. Um, that would be a key issue. I think uh, a number of the ones raised in, in the FOC advice, but the, the really fundamental one to me is the multi-stakeholder versus multilateral. Um, and that, and there's a lot of implications of which states are supporting which, which vision right now, I think, um, for, for the, the model of internet governance. <coughs> okay, thank you. And that can be the beginning of, um, as we say, a discussion that then we continue after we leave the room um, in terms of coordination and like continuing to work on the issues. But, uh, Bruna, um, so where, where are we? We are I was discussing. Just say, let's continue gathering like the inputs and complaints about the process, and then we can use like 40 minutes for strategy like, and next steps, right? Okay. Um, so so concerns about the process and recommendations, um, so we could spend some time on that. And then also on the substance question, though, we haven't really heard much of that. Perhaps we can revisit whether there's interest in maybe breaking out into a couple of groups about, for example, look, guys, it's the beginning of the week. If you don't want to do breakout groups now, um, <laughs> it's going to be a long week. Um, no, but we don't have to do them. But um, but somehow find a way to discuss the key pressing issues of the substance, and then um, we discuss how we take those forward. So on the process, any uh, reflections and concerns and indeed recommendations for how the GDC should be developed from now on? Transparency. Transparency, okay, great. Transparency in what way? <laughs> Everything. <laughs> We want process, we want modalities, what else do we want? <laughs> Timeline, the proper one. What do you what do you want to know about the process going forward? Hi, Svetlana, article nineteen. Uh, well, I mean I'm <coughs> I will be speaking from the perspective of CSOs which are not that well represented at the consultation side. First of all, the timeline, of course, the time difference. Well, when it comes to the Asia continent, yeah. when you have uh, three seconds, <laughs> I'm exaggerating, of course, like three minutes for your presentation, and like it's 2 a.m. in the morning, it's hard to convey a message. So maybe uh, the good idea would be have at least the regional groups which would collect all these voices, and of course engage civil society from the, those regions like in one spot, and then all together convey to the headquarters. Because otherwise, it's um, absolutely impossible to have a voice. Even though, for instance, before my times with Article 19, I was representing Myanmar uh, civil society. And you have to have like a really huge motivation to speak out, to wake up that, n that night and try to catch those you know, consultation points. And I'm not the only one who was there. I mean, there have been other civil societies in the region who had a really good presentations and they will try to fit in the message within one minute but sometimes they were cut off. I mean, this is technical, of course. Uh, and perhaps to have the regional focuses, let's say uh, authoritarian countries could focus on internet freedoms, like what we are working right now, for instance, and we convey a message in that side. So, yeah, thank you. Thanks. So regional consultations. Um, if I could say, as someone who was in the room for a lot of the deep dives, I don't know what happened to all, they were taking notes of everything we said. I don't know what happened to those <laughs> notes. <laughs> I um, think they all ended in the issues paper somehow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, the reports that were submitted. 
that are on the secretary, uh, the, the tech envoy's website, but yeah, I'm not sure but what else. Just to remind that we also wanted to try to get some messages out of this meeting, right? It's like something we could say, just like, doesn't need to be two paragraphs, can be just one saying like, we need more transparency timeline, a proper process, we need yeah. like missions to bring us to the meetings, New York is not an accessible yeah, so place, more process something points. like that. More so process so points. More process more process, yes, we all will would love more process. That is exactly what we want. Now, um, the organizations I work with, day in, day out, are like 70% of them are just finding out that this is a thing that exists right now. So um, I don't know that transparency is the word that we're looking for, like uh, there is a dire lack of representation completely on, on organizations that are doing the actual work day in, day out. No, not us, we just meet in rooms and talk shit. Um, so that is something that I'm very concerned about because if they're finding out just now and they don't have the tools to engage because this is a very specific methodology and you have to kind of be in certain rooms to for fucking understand what is happening and they're just finding out and they're just like, what, what does, GDC mean, what <laughs> the letters. Um, there is not enough time at all for them to engage with the process. And uh, what I feel that in combination with the doodling is that this completely went a different way. And if we were not heard being in the room, the chances of whatever they have to say being getting to be heard in this process are close to zero. So I don't want to be like horribly um, negative about it, but but just like you know, bringing what my my people are feeling. Thanks. Anyone else? Thanks. Um, maybe building on what was shared, I feel like um, there's this e exclusion um, by design in the process. So like even the notes not being shared. Because for me, one of the big problems is that there's just a lack of coherence across the board with these different priorities. So like we have this priority about like the digital inclusion and digitalization or digital transfer transformation very vaguely defined being pushed within like, for example, the UN system that conflicts with our climate action goals. And so there is this lack of co coherence across the board. And I feel like when you pointed out as members of civil society or groups that have been underrepresented in these processes, when there's like that thing becomes very stark and apparent and we make it explicit that because there's no real concrete way of like trying to cohere all of this together, like without scrapping, like what's kind of already been pre-drafted and what's being pushed right now, like through these so-called processes, like because it feels very predetermined to me, like what their end outputs are gonna be, um, that like even if we try to like, um, you know, contribute in whatever ways, like because fundamentally that it's, it's been designed to exclude um, that we're not really getting anywhere just by thinking about how, how do we insert ourselves into a pre-created process, but rather thinking about like how do we co-design and create something that we're working towards collectively um, that also works together with other movements um, that really matter in this space. So that's my big thing is like there's a total lack of coherence, lack of co-design, um, and it's really undermining our agency at an individual and collective level. Thanks. Anyone else? Yeah, I think part of the process that's already been alluded to is um, just a feedback loop, like the need for a feedback loop of like what, um, <laughs> how the inputs are um, are being used or are processed internally. It, I mean, it's not unique to the GDC. I mean, anyone who's contributed to the UN processes know it's it's a black hole sometimes of information. Um, but, uh, and then second, I think for me, and I don't think we're gonna get that from the co-facilitators, um, but uh, I'd like to, like basically what Ellen and I was talking about, um, what's at stake with this GDC? Like why is it important and why should, uh, you know, partners care, um, our, why should our networks care about this? Um, and, uh, and especially with all the different processes that are going on, there's so many different frameworks being discussed, civil societies being asked to contribute to a lot of them. Um, and it's like, it's overwhelming. And so like, why, why does this process matter and why should, uh, uh, why should we be paying close attention to it? I think we need to kind of c 
come up with that maybe internally too. Some of the act the questions we're asking um, in the main session or we suggested as a main session like policy questions for this week is how member states are gonna ensure the buy-in from all stakeholders, right? Because we're talking about the GDC like as a broader kind of space or anything like that, but it's also something that's gonna discuss the code of conduct for information integrity. So how are they ensuring like big tech is actually doing the buy-in into that conversation? Like if we civil society are, are also included from this conversation, how are we gonna enforce that together with member states? So I think there's a lot of questions again about the follow-up steps and, and what's at stake in fact, because it's not just um, the future of the IGF or what the DCF is gonna be or whether multi-stakeholders are gonna be dropped off as a participation tool and we're gonna move back to a multilateral, mostly kind of system, but there is a lot of follow-up questions in that place. So plus one on that. Could I just ask, does anyone think a new annual forum on digital cooperation is based in New York is a good idea, is something that we, that we need? Yeah. <laughs> I do too. Um, <laughs> somebody want to yes. speak in, in favor of it? Yeah? I thought I, I'm loud enough. <laughs> well, as a concept, of course, it's um, not a bad idea, but in terms of like practicality, uh, it should be spread it around the regions. Again, I'm, like, I'm for inclusion of the variety of civil societies and not only civil society which works with the digital uh, aspects. There should be civil societies which are somehow engaged uh, through human rights uh, line as well. And New York is it's too far, it's too expensive as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. But so I think we have rough consensus that civil society does not need a new <laughs> annual space. <laughs> Sorry for me. All right, so yeah, um, other process points we wanna get at. We have regionalization, we have feedback fatigue. Yes. I just would like to know, we talk about multi-stakeholders, multi obviously we're new here, and um, but we're coming from a really technical background and it's just not super clear how a technical community or, multi or stakeholder could kind of help. I don't know if anyone wants a two-finger I, I just wanted to answer to the previous speaker from the back um, that I do think when we focus on uh, civil society that is engaged in human rights, we still have a lack of competence of kind of digital literacy. Many human rights organizations are not very familiar what digital environment means to human rights. Although we are here at the IGF, where it's very present and in front of our head, it's not in general that human rights organizations are uh, enough familiar with, with digital environment and what it means. So uh, it, we still need some kind of training <laughs> for, for uh, civil society organizations, I think. I just want to say yeah. we ran into that same problem as we've been talking to people and it's been really helpful uh, describing it internet access as a prerequisite to human rights because I think that's where it's losing cohesion. Thank you. Yeah, I want to advocate for a um, um, very proactive um, engagement of uh, the technical community because there is a setback in relation to the role that the technical community could play and should play and has been playing in relation to internet governance and global digital cooperation. One of the uh, challenges and difficulties that has emerged in this process is that there is a setback in how internet governance is being conceived. So that was already you know, discussed in, in by the time of the WSIS. There were some in on the information society and there was broad agreement that internet governance is broad and goes beyond the management of numbers and resources and infrastructure and technical resources of the internet. And now we are back to that conversation is unbelievable. So uh, that is why it was pointed out by 
by the FOC uh, in the mention that the technical community, it was you? Or yeah, that the technical community is, is, is being left out of the process. So I think that a proactive engagement is necessary in, on, in order to counteract that narrative and, and, and also to make sure that whatever comes out of the global digital process is not a setback in something that is so basic as you know, the scope of internet governance itself. Just here. Thank you. Actually, I will think of a specific topic in terms of substance to think of process. Because the, the, the last policy brief version mentioned, for instance, like sustainable digital public infrastructure and also mentioned, refers to ensuring labor rights. But none of the multilateral organizations, like in AI regulation and AI debate, it's touching the labor issue, for instance, or even in the digital public infrastructure discussion, no one mentions sustainability on that, or like carbon footprint for internet infrastructure, or even digital technologies. One. So I was wondering, like, until the launching of the Arab Common Future agenda in one year ahead, what, what can really be done that civil society can like bring back this really important elements that I think from the document to put be put in practice uh, from from this multilateral organization somehow. Thank you. And and you can mention the environmental impact of, of flying everyone to New York for yet another conference every year. I'm sorry to harp on that, but yeah. We have one more. Um. <coughs> yeah. I was just um. You know, if if there's this, if this if there's a sort of broad consensus around the frustrations of the um, consultation process um, and the kind of um, uh, performative nature of some of this consultation and um, uh, you know frustrations around inclusivity and everything, I was thinking about uh, you know we talked about the idea of um, trying to identify some things to uh, do as a coordinated effort and kind of collective advocacy. I mean maybe what we should be trying to do is, is rather than focusing on the content is to actually subvert the process itself and kind of see if, if it's, you know, and I don't know, maybe that's just a waste of our collective energy at this point, but, um, uh, you know, if that is something we want to do, it feels like it's something that we need to do sooner rather than later. There is one um, ongoing idea that was issued by the IGF working group strategy. That would be to use this space, the IGF as a sounding board to whatever came out from the, the GDC process, right? Or the summit of the future. We submitted a letter to the co-facilitators. Obviously it might be too soon to get an answer on that, but it was just acknowledged and nothing else. So it would be interesting to think about a follow-up mechanism or anything that would actually build up on the collective intelligence that the IGF is bringing up. So yeah, anyone else? We're still on process. Yeah, we can reflect back some of the comments we've heard about process and see whether we want to um, cohere them or like uh, maybe uh, in some way um, agree to them. Uh, um, so one point that was made was around the need for transparency. So transparency in terms of process uh, is really key. Um, and linked to that, that there has been so far exclusion by design. Um, we can provide some examples of that. The need for more coherence and working together and also the need for connection with other groups and movements. Um, so I think labor rights and sustainability um, and environmental issues being linked is important. And then the need for a feedback lo loop. So that's links to the transparency point, the primacy of a multi-stakeholder approach and the importance of proactive engagement of the technical community and reflecting the real scope of internet governance, not a very limited scope. So that's what we've heard. I mean, that's what I, I took notes of. Uh, so th some of those are connected and we can perhaps put them together um, so that they're not duplicative, but those are some messages about the process. Do people uh, generally agree that that reflects what, what's been heard? Does anyone fundamentally disagree with any of those? No? Okay. No new forum, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. 
No need. I understand that we don't feel like the process is being fair or open, transparent, and so on. But we are just wondering here, the Wikimedians. <laughs> we complain about this, but it's not too late to hack the process. Uh, what are our chances of change, or it's just to speak out and you know let them know that we are pissed off about this. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that's a good question, and my understanding is that the co-facilitators are now tasked with holding consultations, um, and those are intergovernmental. But it's up to them, as it is for any all the co-facilitators that will be appointed for the chapters of the summit, uh, will need to run consultations. So we can do our own advocacy with, um, we're likely to be Sweden and Rwanda, I understand. But the co-facilitators, we can take their ear, I think, at this point. We have an opportunity. We did do that before, and they did respond, um, and they set up a civil society consultation, which they um, set up for three hours just to hear um, the perspectives of civil society. So they set up an online consultation once we shared concerns before. So I think there is, a, to answer your question, Amalia, just um, I don't, I can't say <laughs> definitely it will make a difference, but I think we're at a critical juncture where we can put out some recommendations, the concerns and then some recommendations and, and really try and speak with a loud and collective voice to shape their how they will do the process. And what Valeria was saying earlier as well, like if the process is gonna be kept as an intergovernmental one, then the way out might be ask for delegations to include us, just like the ITU, so it's done. Yes, I think we can put forward expectations or demands even do we know when the first draft is going to be released and who's drafting it? But before we go, I want to respond to Amalia because I think it's a very important question. And I do think that we have to see, I want to respond to you. I, I think what we have to, obviously the GDC is important, but we have to look beyond the GDC and understand that this is a very particular moment in which the proximity of the WSIS plus 20 review is also going to determine how the digital future is going to be shaped. Governments have just had a sustainable development summit like days ago, and they have agreed an agenda on how to accelerate the implementation of the sustainable development goals. So there are these different processes happening, and the GDC is in the and they are not connecting. So I think we have to go uh, to, to, to see beyond. That. So it is not just only uh, how to engage and make sure that we are we are being heard in the in relation to the global digital compact. It's also about the role that we can play as civil society to connect those processes. Because at the end of the day, they are the, the UN agencies are competing about leadership for these processes, how, how those processes are going to, to connect. The governments are being appointed to facilitate those processes. We should also be demanding these connections because all of them have to do with uh, shaping the digital future and the governance and in this broader framework of the global digital cooperation. So I think that's how we should approach our engagement in the global digital compact and keep pushing for establishment of synergies between those different processes. And Access Now is uh, in the process of mapping all of the Summit of the Future outputs and, and processes, and so we can hopefully share that and those timelines, um, you know, a, a basic summary of what we know, because, again, the GDC is just one of at least, you know, six or eight outputs planned for the Summit, which will be in September 2024 at the uh, gen 79th General Assembly of the UN. Oh, just maybe one last point about um, the converging spaces, right? Like, we have a lot of notable examples of multi-stakeholder processes in the past. Like, it's um, WIGIG is one from 2005. Net Mundial is one. It's also rumored um, to happen again. Um, what else is there? IANA, Stewardship Transition as well. WISIS, ICANN. There is a lot of like collective knowledge about multi-stakeholder participation, and that should be like moved like forward as a good example and maybe a guiding kind of example for this process, um, regardless of like the lack of information or the information we might have now about it being solely an intergovernmental process. So, just to bring in some more examples. 
I also just wanted to raise that um, in addition to the other processes, the Summit of the Future also has other tracks that have digital components to them. How can we as civil society not just get too focused on the GDC that we're missing, like the security track has tons that are on digital that could implicate like cybersecurity. Yeah, exactly. So like, is there a way we can coordinate to track these different tracks? <laughs> like, I don't know. I know we're doing this, Peter, but like <laughs> for the broader group, yeah. for the broader group. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I, th I think that's a really good point and we should collect ideas for how we move forward on that um, after we leave the room. Um, but hearing a lot about the need for, for synergies between this process and others, so any ideas for that, how we coordinate as civil society, but also um, perhaps how we uh, in our individual um, ways or as different organizations, um, we work on making sure that we have that front and center, the need for coordination. Um, any ideas for that would be welcome. Uh, and, and if any states want to facilitate that, you know, there won't be a RightsCon in June 2024, right, which would be three, four months before the summer of the future. Now, is there some, is there a time and a place or that governments would support us to coordinate, you know, enough in advance of the summit, but still, you know, after we actually know what's gonna happen? Yeah, great. Okay, so um, we have about 30 minutes left. Uh, I'm just including my own buffer there, 10 minutes. Um, but we do have a bit of time to, review what we have discussed already, or we can talk more about the different topic areas of the, the GDC, for example, um, that have already been outlined. Um, I'm not sure if that's too ambitious. I want to get a feel for what people would like to do. Would you like to cohere the messages that we already developed around process and, and really work on those or, or start talking about substance? And perhaps to the point about um, the colleague who interviews earlier about the process, um, I think we can always put a proviso um, on anything that we say, saying, you know, without these fundamental um, points about transparency and openness being met, we do not believe that this process, um, you know, is legitimate. I mean, I'm just, just offering an option there. Uh, but um, I think it is of value. I mean, clearly, I think it is of value. <laughs> That's why we're having this discussion to try and make some demands and recommendations um, of the leaders of the process. So, four asks. Okay. Well, there was, there are, I think, four already. One on transparency, another on coherence, um, and feed feedback loops probably links into no new forums or uh, like synergy. Maybe there's two key ones there with with some sub-themes um, already. Uh, and um, there was also that point about the, multi the scope of internet governance and the need for truly multi-stakeholder um, engagement with the uh, technical community being adequately in proactively engaged. So maybe there's three there. Uh, right, so what do people think? Sure. <laughs> so is anything coming out of, of that, like the scratching of the head? Any thoughts you want to share? Or you're good. Okay, not yet. Okay. Um, yes, Peter, what were you going to say? Let's move to substantive issues. Okay, okay. So we've d we have those three themes around um, the process, which we can come back to, and perhaps we can discuss how we connect and uh, really synthesize those afterwards. But is everyone up for talking about the substance of what's in the GDC? Okay, I see some nods. Um, okay, so we have, should we go through the themes? Or what should we, how do we people, people want to do it? Do you want to look at the issues paper, paragraph by paragraph? <laughs> <laughs> no, I know nobody wanted to do that. Okay. No, we can just read out what's on. I mean, just just highlight what's on the issues paper. Yeah. Now. Okay. Very Yay. briefly, topic wise. Um, not so not gonna read it. Promise. Um, we actually we're going to project it here, but you can also look it up on your device. Um, excuse me. Could you you know the second file that I shared? Okay, thank you. Um, 
So how do how do you search for it in a search engine of your choice? Yes. Yes, please. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Sorry. Just gonna do it on the Hello. Before we get to the remote participant, there was a proposal that we um, talked to the Sweden about using the Stockholm Internet Forum, SIF. As a uh, as the next kind of waypoint to uh, coordinate civil society on the sum of the future, can we get a woo? <laughs> All right, there's a feedback. Uh, yeah, a couple thoughts on that. Or are you scratching your head again? Oh, hello. <laughs> we, have, we have the remote. All right. Okay. We can come back to that. We have Timothy on the line. Timothy, can you hear us? Okay, we can't hear you. Can we get the remote? Timothy, we cannot hear you. Can you hear, can me you now? hear us? I can, I can see the microphone. Oh, yes. going. Yeah, yeah, welcome. I, yes, <laughs> you are there. Nice to, hello all. I'm in Australia. So I've been working for 13 years or so on mostly W3C work that led to the credentials and the digital identity as you understand it and redirect web, which is now known as solid and things relating to my data, all those sorts of things. When you are doing W3C works, it is about getting the patents of all the largest companies in the world, right? It is not about defining exactly how they may be used and it is done in public domain. So the really horrible human rights use cases, the ones about human trafficking, the ones about people who are left with nothing, the ones that are about children, you cannot do in the public domain. And they're not in the interest of large companies who are very focused on payments. So in my view, there has the, been a rush by a group of um, participants to commercialize a particular type of outcome that do not support human rights very well and does not easily support the ability to support what's called personal ontology. So that is the idea that you have an artificial intelligent agent that is running on your laptop that knows everything about you and is able to help you with your health care, with your well-being, understanding which herbs you might be eating to improve your diet, using the commons of the world. The ability to have relationships with one another without a platform mediator who is issuing mandates in, in their terms of service agreement about how you know about the conditions upon which you're allowed to have relationships with one another so this is a very long time since the days where the magna carta was and i know negotiated in a place called holborn in the uk it was not mandated there would be no human right there would be no magna carta if, if it was purely a mandate type system. So in order to deal with the social ramifications, this very important social work, and to be able to build the artificial intelligence infrastructure that we need to be able to support every language of prayer, every mother tongue language, and upon that build our ontologies based on what we mean. Because if I am as an Australian talking about my thongs, other people overseas may take that in a way that it is not the same meaning because in Australia it is footwear, it is, it is, not, it is not ladies' underwear. So, so in this I'm looking to do a, w, a Internet Society global topic chapter that can therefore be leveraged with the citizens of at least 110 jurisdictions around the world, different peoples, to engage and engage in turn other, other parts of their society to try to address these things. And so I'd um, encourage others to have a think and have a look and maybe reach out and see whether or not that might be helpful. I was concerned about what I saw in the GDC.
Okay, thank you. Um, yes, so thank you for coming in. Uh, I think a lot of what you said about the need um, to meaningfully reflect um, a range of perspectives is very important. And we want to do that perhaps by looking at the substance, which I'm looking at the issues paper and <laughs> I know people didn't want to go through it. Um, but I think it is uh, after all the work that many have done on um, the consultations, albeit you know they weren't very open and inclusive as they could have been, um, an interesting springboard. Um, and so if, um, excuse me, sorry, uh, we could um, put that up or you can look it up on your device. We can go through it just to see what has been already said and get some, some thoughts from you, some reflections. Perhaps we can spend a couple of minutes on each um, paragraph. Um, set of <laughs> I promise it's gonna be really fun. Actually, I can't promise that, but anyway, we're gonna try. Um, d could, we put, uh, could we put up the sec, yes. And if we can zoom in. So this is the first page, which um, has uh, some text on the need for strengthening digital cooperation, closing the digital divide, and ensuring an inclusive, open, safe, and digital s secure digital future for all which is anchored in human rights and enables the attainment of the Sustainable Development Goals. So that's the Sustainable Development Goals, perhaps something already quite positive. Um, and then there is also the importance of connectivity and digital public infrastructure was highlighted by many, especially within the fields of health and education. Okay, a GDC could support exchange and best practices among countries on digitalization in this regard. Um, that sounds like it's promoting uh, connectivity and, and digital public infrastructure. Uh, any thoughts on that? I'm, I'm just saying that because I heard before interest in reflecting on that digital public infrastructure point. Is that strong text? Could we, could we suggest something else? Any thoughts? No, we, can't really we can't zoom in? Okay. If you do want to look at it, I think what you need to look up is issues paper from the co-facilitators, 1st of September, 2023. Any points about, um, yes, connectivity and DPI, digital public infrastructure? Well, the okay. DPI was in the, the policy brief and the quoting was 15 times. Um, so it's definitely gonna be in the issues brief. Go ahead. Okay, um, so better reflecting a wide range of infrastructure. Any thoughts on that or indeed anything else related to DPI? Uh, like questions on the definition. Yeah, questions on the definition. Okay, great. Any other um, thoughts on that? Okay, um, I another. Have, I have a question. Please. There doesn't seem to be anything that says, because it's all like in this idea of the commons, but there's nothing about like responsible development of the technology being used, it seems. and. Like, for instance, these DID programs that would come out of the uh, tracking of uh, giving people rights. I mean, they're already doing that in a number of different countries, and it's been used pretty maliciously by mm -hmm. organizing governments. So I wanted to just stress that maybe a word to be add is, add is like, responsible. <laughs> or responsible or rights-based, or any other, any other thoughts? Right, rights-based deployment or use, or? What do you think? Empowering sovereignty, <laughs> like of the individual. Of the okay, so in centric, human centric, or individual centric, or user centric. Okay, mm -hmm. so something uh, to that effect. Okay. Any other thoughts on the DPI p piece? Um, universal, affordable, and accessible connectivity was highlighted as a key issue. Digital literacy and skills were raised as fundamental to achieve meaningful universal connectivity. Interesting that there is the term meaningful there. Meaningful is super important. Yeah, I think there's also some, some elements of this that we can perhaps emphasize as important. 
There is emerging convergence on the need to build digital capacities through engaging public-private partnerships and promoting greater financial investment in affordable, accessible mobile connectivity. Um, okay. I. Uh, yeah, I think ne generally it means industry and government, but perhaps we could emphasize the need to engage. Um, develop and deploy technologies for the internet infrastructure and like maintenance of it in general. I believe so. It's one thing. Perhaps we can emphasize the point that it should be all stakeholders or what, um, all, okay. I don't know if we can note that. Oh, are we noting these? Um, yeah, no, okay, great. Um, thank you. <laughs> these are no work, I know. Um, okay, so then if we move, okay, anyone else on the public, private, yes, at the back? Um, yeah, I think you rightly pointed that there needs to be a clearer definition of public-private partnerships um, and that there's this risk of undermining um, the like civic engagement um, in like the um, development of these like public services. I think we see this a lot in the local city context, um, especially with the capture of mm -hmm. um, different infrastructure. Um, exactly, the whole smart cities thing that's um, being, I think, amongst us in the room um, criti critically um, um, assessed, but not necessarily at a more public, um, like wider s global scale. Yeah, that's a really key point. Thank you. Yeah, and just uh, just uh, s specifically around like any anything to do with the public sphere and and um, you know public square and whatever being privatized is kind of rings alarm bells. So um, I don't know that that's necessarily a problem, but I just yeah, private public partnerships are not necessarily a good thing. Yeah. So truly comprehensive and inclusive public-private partnerships need to reflect the engagement of all stakeholders, something to that effect. Any, any other points on this? Okay, um, and then what we have here um, in the next paragraph is the importance of an open, free, and globally accessible internet, the significance of interoperable internet standards and protocols were emphasized. Reference to the importance of the Tunis agenda was made. There is broad consensus that the Internet Governance Forum plays and should continue to play a key role in promoting the global and interoperable nature and governance of the Internet. I'll just add that this part was the part about fragmentation that was moved on to Internet governance or digital cooperation. So it's all kind of bundled up together right now. So the first line is definitely avoid Internet fragmentation. And the second one is the one that talks about the processes and convergence and um, better coordination between them and avoiding duplication as well. It is, it is, it is. I think so. I mean, to me, that's the, the, the main part that shows that the co facilitators actually listened to the community, right? Like reinforcing the IGF. Yeah, and on that point, I just want to emphasize that I think when we're giving any feedback to the co-facilitators, we should include the positives that we're noticing in this, not just the negatives, because we've received feedback in the past that we do need to you know, be more mindful of like emphasizing the good and not just focusing on the negative. So I think that this, this point in particular is something we should lead with about um, how we are happy to see that. And yeah, absolutely. Great. Um, I think I think emphasizing uh, what is in here that is positive um, will be really helpful to strengthen that that uh, I think tr relationship with them. Um, so thank you for that. Um, and so when you when you go to I the second paragraph, also reflects yes the need for not duplicating existing forums and processes, which again is in line with s many of the messages that came through in the consultations. Anything here that people think, I mean, there was a lot about process we discussed in the first part of this session uh, that you think should be reflected here. 
Um, yeah, Bruna? Yeah, my suggestion for this one is just to think about the follow-up mechanisms, right? Like, there's the proposal for the IGFS one. SIF, as I'm seeing, could be another one. Um, would there be any kind of, like, concerns about using any of these spaces as a follow-up kind of space or discussion or anything like that? Do we have an idea of what do we envision as a follow-up for the GDC? Oh, are you saying that we should perhaps say the IGF could play a role in that? Or uh, That's what the, the uh. WG strategy asks, but there is also the idea of SIF, so or using those spaces for discussion. Any thoughts on what role the IGF could play or any other forum in the implementation of a future compact? Do people think? Yep, Valeria. there is a lot of potential. One of the ideas that we have uh, obviously considered in the evolution of the IGF is how it can incubate ideas and responses and the policy networks, the dynamic coalitions and the other intersessional mechanisms are definitely ways in which we can suggest that the IGF uh, provide some guidance on, on, on the implementation and the monitoring of the of the Global Digital Compact. Not necessarily to be the monitoring body, but definitely to uh, inform you know, at least the, the type of indicators, the type of evidence that should be produced if we want the GDC to be monitored properly you know, in relation to the principles that will be adopted. Okay. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. As an example is that there is a dynamic coalition around the UNESCO um, universal Internet Universality mm -hmm. Indicators that is providing guidance yeah. and, and feed and using the, the outcomes of the, of the IGF to feed into the, the indicators. Well, so it's thing, something similar could be done for the GDC. We have been slowly converging to the same space, right? Like for the last two years um, or three years, like two policy networks were created, one on fragmentation, another one on AI, as key topics and discussions for the GDC. The whole discussion and focus for this IGF on digital cooperation and governance is also in light of that. Like we want to make the agenda more like fine-tuned with the process be to use the space for bringing in proper inputs. But I, I agree, like we need to move on in terms of like bringing in more, more um, suggestions. Okay, and then, yeah. Uh, we've only got m about 20 minutes left, so we can try and do the rest of the um, paper, and then we'll move on to next step. Um, I wanted to add, I think we need to qualify um, what we mean by interoperable nature, um, because uh, that's also being pushed by the different like surveillance um, organizations. Um, we see that a lot in like the European context, for example, um, and it's inf affecting um, displaced persons and migrants in particular. Um, so, like, advancing that interoperable internet is actually negative for human rights. And so, I think we need to be more explicit there what we mean by um, key role in promoting. Okay. Okay. I see some nodding as well. Did you want to react to that? I have a reaction. Um, um, no, I'm going to focus on the interoperable part. Yeah. Uh, the, the thing is that uh, we use interoperable as the positive way of saying surveillance, basically. <laughs> so we were talking about international data transfers, national data transfers, um, systems that are centralized, so everything is connected to each other, and then this is a, a sort of a buzzword in the whole conversation of uh, global public, uh, digital public infrastructure. And it's kind of dangerous to, um, to go into that discourse. And, and on that note, I had another comment on sustainability, but I'm going to keep it to myself. Just stressing that sustainability, uh, sustainability, no, interoperable is there as one of the critical infrastructures of the, like critical um, well, properties. My brain is mushy, I don't know. No, don't I even know what I'm doing anymore. Yeah. 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 I, 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 I get, yeah, no, yeah. We need to explicate a little bit with this one. Um. Yeah, I was gonna wait till the end to say this, but because it just follows from what you just said, um, there's this like document is full of buzzwords <laughs> and no substance really, and it doesn't contain 
um, at least from what I see, the points that many of you raised as like what you addressed in your submissions, written submissions, like there's no mention of shutdowns keep being on the internet. There's no mention of the word surveillance or privacy rights. Um, and there's a lot of, like you just said, uh, problematic issues contained in nice buzzwords like digital ID within the framework of DPI. Um, and so uh, I think there's a lot of problems with this, but I, like, is this gonna be the basis of the global digital, com what, what is this letter exactly? Like, what is it? going to feed into? The letter is the result of the deep dives. Um, it's how the co-facilitators, it's basically what the co-facilitators learned from the deep dives. Then in that's a, very a big problem. High <laughs> but it's a very high <laughs> level document, I agree. Yeah. Do we want to move to the following paragraphs? I yeah, think. because there is one on data right, yeah. right after that. Um, yeah, on the on the topic of um, interoperability and the open, free, and globally accessible internet stuff, I I wanted to echo the the buzzwords, and I thought maybe a word that could counteract some of these buzzwords would be if and you guys had mentioned kind of being more forceful in in discussions. Um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with brainstorming around deterrence systems and like information sharing systems and like some of the work we've done at our, our research lab has been about like if there's a region cut off from the internet, how could that region have like a sister city pact with another region on the planet and like they would receive an alert saying that this population would have taken off. And these types of like deterrence systems are just ideas that can be openly discussed and governments wouldn't necessarily have as aggressive of, of a reaction to them because it's more about a hypothetical system. So these paragraphs get to some of the meat, right? The yeah, so there's, um, there's a need to articulate principles to guide regional and national approaches to data protection and governance, um, leveraging data and cross-border data flows was emphasized while finding a balanced approach between free flow of data and data protection. Any thoughts on that? They managed to talk about data without mentioning privacy or surveillance. Okay, so we can, yeah, any thought, any? The note mm. is data protection paragraph is awful. That's the note. <laughs> okay. It's not good. <laughs> <laughs> Rewrite in full, okay. Um, and then there's convergence around the potential for a compact to promote digital trust and security and to address disinformation, hate speech, and other harmful content. Um, online content, a GDC could advance transparent and responsible design and application, including human rights-based approach mm, of digital technologies. In this regard, the code of conduct for information integrity on digital platforms that is being developed will be important. Okay, thoughts? Jan seems to have a lot to say. What do you think about <laughs> the... Uh... Hey, um, yeah, uh, addressing this information, hate speech, and harmful content, none of these things mean anything legally or have any specific definition. So this means um, very little, unfortunately. Um, so I think that needs to be, <laughs> I mean, that's what we, um, and with Article 19, and that's what we always say, that these are like not legal terms. We use them sometimes, but we always use them in like parentheses because it's just unclear, except maybe hate speech, um, as in incitement to violence. None of these words mean anything, and you can restrict a lot um, on that basis. I would just say that there's also concerns about using frames of like digital trust and security to address mm -hmm. disinformation, hate speech, and that it can easily be used to legitimize overly broad actions or, or regulation um, from governments. Okay, great, yes, okay. Um, also very needs to be redrafted paragraph. Um, just yeah. one comment on that. Um, now I just wanted to add one comment on that because it seems or some UN agencies are believing that a lot of the work from the um, Internet of Trust debate on UNESCO is converging to the code of conduct space. So there might be at some point a discontinuation of the UNESCO, which is ending, right? Like they haven't announced the end. 
already, but um, there is an internal working group on this topic exclusively with UNDP and, and some other spaces and also talking about elections that is going to converge to this um, discussion as well. So it's one of the key areas of discussion for the future. Okay. Um, is this on this point? Yep. Okay. And then we will move on. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, sorry, I mean, yeah, I, I, that whole paragraph has got problems, but just specifically on the security question, um, maybe one uh, very specific tweak would just be changing security to safety. Um, I think when you talk about disinformation and hate speech and stuff, uh, thinking of it from a safety perspective rather than a security perspective is, is uh, I mean, that sounds like actually maybe what that is supposed to say. Um, okay. So yeah. It also, it doesn't use a term expression or free expression. Or yeah. Positive. Okay, great. Thank you for that feedback. So the artificial intelligence um, paragraph is quite long. I wouldn't read it in full, but it talks about the benefits of AI um, in enhancing productivity, value creation, and wider digital economy. There is a need to further a common understanding of the risks entailed. Forms of regulation, standards, and guardrails are mentioned as potential means to address some risks. Emphasis on the need for a human-centric approach as well as transparent and equitable risk-based approaches. Okay. Any thoughts? Any burning reactions? Any? Yes. Okay, just two at the back, and then we'll, I'm afraid we have to move on. Um, I would just say that it's concerning that human rights isn't included here as the approach, and so we've got like human-centric, which is great, but I think we really need to be pushing for human rights as the, the underlying standard. Yeah. I, I think that together with human rights oriented, they should be like even w workers led AI governance. It's really missing the labor is in it. And I think it's a consensus in terms of algorithm control, uh, workers' agency, or even uh, the micro work, which are the building blocks for AI, should be considered also. Great, thank you for that. Um, okay, and yes. Um, just one thing that is bothering me a little bit is that there is no mention, in, as far as I could see, to communities, like uh, what is the role of communities in, in supporting the development of technologies, uh, supporting their governance, and et cetera, especially when we consider like indigenous communities uh, or the traditional ones. I think that's fundamental. Thank you. Um, so the next paragraph is very short, and it's the only place that I think gender comes up. <laughs> and it just yeah. says addressing... Gender digital divide is important. It's like it's gender yeah, this is just very like placating <laughs> words. <laughs> um, so, just uh, requesting more detail here about what ex exactly gender digital divides are they looking at? So, how is technology gender based violence included in here? Um, access to smartphones and access to internet. Um, what else, inclusive technology, how are cultural norms placating in societies and how women have access to phones, just kind of across the spectrum. Uh, uh, the, um, in the hate speech and disinformation, it should flag gender specifically in that section too, probably, if they're gonna talk about that. Okay, noted. Um, and then a couple here. Yeah, that was more or less the same. I wanted to say it's not like we are talking only about a digital gender divide. It's it's a cross-cutting issue <laughs> across all the other issues that are mentioned in the paper, and therefore it's <laughs> I can't believe we have only these two lines <laughs> about uh, a divide. We need, to we need to highlight that. Yeah, no, I agree. It's um. Sorry, this is not about me, what I think, but, um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I, I also find it reductionist that uh, when it comes to women and, and these issues, it's, it's always, uh, you know, it, it's reduced to um, digital equality and this digital divide while it, it transcends that. And I think in addition to it, there should be a recognition, an outright rec recognition that marginalized communities are impacted by all of these issues disproportionately and differently, and therefore they should be prioritized. So beyond the gender, I think we should address that. Okay, so that mainstreaming, cross-cutting. Um, yeah, it's, it's like you said, very reductionist and we'll reflect that. Any, sorry, did you? 
Intersection. Intersectionality. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah, that might have been our shortest intervention. No. Yeah. Just one word there. Okay. But short, short and important. That's good. And not just because the ITU just walked in, but I think there a lot of people have said, you know, named things that fall like lower in the stack maybe than, um, than like uh, on the more, you know, content level. Um, people are talking about access to devices, things like community networking, different forms of infrastructure. Um, so, yeah, it seems like in a few different places, um, there's a lot, you know, and the environmental impacts and things like that hit uh, at other lower layers, maybe. Then, okay, um, thank you. That's a really good general point. And then the last one is on sustainability, <laughs> the role of green technology and dig digitalization to accelerating climate ambitions was highlighted. And uh, there's something also about the need to address technology-related drivers of climate risk and growing consumption and e-waste. Sorry to go back to language, but sustainable. Um, there are two ways in which the word sustainable is used. One is sustainable development goals. Uh, so the, go the goals and the development is sustainable. And then sustainable uh, in relation to climate, which uh, hopefully one day, I don't know, um, climate will be <laughs> sustainable. But there is absolutely nothing, and, and in all that talk about uh, the global, uh, um, I'm sorry, the digital public infrastructure, about the su sustainability of the technology itself. And this is when we say the uh, technologies have to be um, open and has to be inclusive, and has to be all of that, but it has to be sustainable. Because we come in into these countries and we say, oh, this country is not developed. Let's give them mirrors and internet. And then um, we, leave and the technology is left there and the technology falls apart after six months and this is what we keep doing over and over and over and over and this is nowhere at all okay thank you for that we can reflect that and um just coming on to the last part of our session we want to talk about how we reflect all of this feedback one more online oh, sorry. Um, are you able to facilitate that uh, thanks Yeah, online. We're inclusive and respect remote and participation. Yes, and we'll have to be very quick because yeah. we need to uh, wrap up, really. How are we going to... All right, um, so we'll talk I about like coordination, like concrete. Yes, yeah. so we have some ideas, which are just as fun as going through this paragraph by paragraph. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone really enjoyed it in the end. We have two hands <laughs> up and we have... Um, Six minutes to the end of the session, so Val, let's, let's okay. Valerie. Um, yes, we'll we'll have this, and then we'll discuss next steps. Just collective actions in relation to to coordination, just two possible entry points. First, the ones that I mentioned, mm -hmm. we can articulate around this that has been being pro produced by a collective process already. So, inviting all of you to 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 engage with that process, and the other one is that we are launching here a campaign that is called the IGF we want, and is related and responding to the fact that the, there are these attempts to replicate or duplicate or even disappear the IGF. We don't know what the <laughs> intention is. So uh, they are building on the achievements of the IGF that are many, many, including the, I mean, proving how the multi-stakeholder approach can be implemented around internet governance. So we are launching this campaign here uh, and that's perhaps an entry point for collective action. So you, you can contact me if the name of the campaign is the IGF we want. Thank you. So um, we, we um, have to figure out what we do next with everything that we've discussed. We have three main themes in the first part of our discussion on process uh, that we thought we could write out um, so that it, it makes um, makes sense uh, to a wider community that wasn't part of this discussion, and those themes are transparency, coherence, and need for accurate reflection of the scope. Um, and then, oh, I'm afraid we, yes, we, we have to wrap up really quickly. Would you be able to share your um, points by email or in the chat, Timothy? Yeah, absolutely. That Thank you. Just really quickly, I think um, there should be a definition of digital slavery that is sought to be worked through. Because we have, at one end of the spectrum, pervasive surveillance, 
that apparently knows everything and provides a, uh, cyber security. At the other end of the spectrum, there are many vulnerable people who cannot go to a court of law because apparently there is no evidence. So, so somehow understanding what digital slavery actually means, I think is okay. an important reference. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um, and you definitely send through any other comments, um, either in the chat and uh, via email. So those are the three process-related uh, recommendations um, and reflections we had. Uh, and so what we can do is, as I said, write them up and then share them via your email, um, really, so that we can use those going forward. And then there was a lot of reactions to the co-facilitator's paper, which when you asked about what is it, it is a basis for future discussion. So I think reacting to it could be quite quite helpful and perhaps drafting a reaction piece or, or something. What do people think? Thoughts? Yeah, I got, I got a lot of notes from a lot of the things you guys brought up, like um, improve like uh, some of the meanings, qualify some of the terms that we'll use, resignify the language in a lot of spaces. So maybe we can work on that like for the statement. Yeah, and just some um, a quick um, note. Um, there's no mention of digital colonialism, and I feel like that one's a really big piece that's missing here. Yeah, exactly. Um, um, I mean, there is a push within like parts of the UN system for this. Um, and then um, like there's a group of us working on decolonizing technology. So, um, And then the other one was green tech doesn't really mean anything. So I think they need to... I'm um, take that out. One of those buzzwords. <laughs> Lots of those buzzwords. Okay, thank you for those. Um, we so we need to uh, get a uh, show of hands, maybe, or uh, actually, um, any reactions um, for the idea of um, setting out the process-related concerns and recommendations. Uh, sharing those with you by email. What do people think? Yes. Would you Would you be interested in getting those in in writing? Um, yeah? Is okay. there a list or do we need to... There's no list. We just need to get your email here um, after the session. And then on the um, feedback on the co-facilitator's paper, the substantive feedback, um, drafting a reaction piece and perhaps having some sign-ons to that yeah. could be a, a way forward. Yeah, yeah. We, can put, we can put all the notes together and share with everybody and see if we can transform it into a document with sign-ons. But I would just like to flag interventions in the main sessions as well. It's really key that we bring some of these issues to the main sessions. Otherwise, co-facilitators that are here and are listening to the meeting and a lot of the sessions will think it's fine, it's smoothless. So it's yeah, important to That's complain. That's a great point because they are here and in listening mode. Um, thank you. Does anyone really want to advertise a session like where we have to be? Yes. All right. Quickly, please. Yes, I think the main session of the Dynamic Coalition, which is on Thursday afternoon, will oh. address exactly these issues. And as the Dynamic Coalitions are a, a, a collective basis for uh, civil society organizations, yep. I do think it would be good to give it a follow-up there. Thank you. Right, dynamic Coalition on Thursday. Any other events? Uh, any uh, The GDC main session on right. Wednesday. CSTD consultation on WISIS plus 20 as well. Okay. So really important. The Just Net IT for Change session. Um, yes, day zero event at 4 p.m. Any others? Okay, so I have some of your emails, and Bruna has some of your emails, and I'm sure Peter has some of your emails. Um, if you come up here, we will get your email, and then we can send you, at the very least, um, the first thing we can do is send the process-related uh, recommendations and concerns. Thank um, you, Sheetal yeah. and Bruna. <laughs> and thank you, Peter, uh, for being like in real teacher mode. I saw that. <laughs> Thanks, Picking everybody. on people. Thank you, everyone. And thanks for resisting the breakout group. <laughs>